I did a little bit of everything. Anything was physical. I loved it. So coming into football was a great way to kind of size up on some of the bullies in the neighborhood, especially when you can catch them one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lot different being in a gang. But you catch them one-on-one, -on -one, they can't hang with you. And I dished out a lot of tail whoopings. I'm going to keep it clean, don't worry. I went to the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. And every, I guess, uh, record that Don Perkins had, he was the first black running back for the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't know he had went to the University of Mexico until I met him one day in a meeting. I come in the back door and there was this guy speaking way up in the front, talking to a group of guys. And you could hear a pin drop. I come through the back door and just the sound of his voice caught my attention and I stopped. And I touched the guy who was recruiting me on the show. I said, who is this guy? He says, Don Perkins. He spoke, he spoke so eloquently. I said, that's the guy. I like to imitate or emulate. College to pros, things sped up a little bit. That sped up a lot. Practice was one thing, but the game was unbelievable. It just happened so fast. I couldn't believe it. I said, ooh, I got to have some more of this. This is good. Until I went to go block a punt, I was mainly drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. And I was going to block a punt. We played the Cleveland Browns in Dallas. And I just remembered, I could see the ball being kicked by the kicker and I knew I was going to block it. And I outstretched my body, full out. Didn't see the guy who was getting ready to block me. He hit me so hard. As you would say in my neighborhood, you felt your kinfolk. And so it was tough being in Dallas, uh, being an individual. I, just, I was constantly, again, <clears throat> getting into a bit of conversa conversation with some of the linemen. They were telling me what I couldn't do in Dallas. And I said, hey, look, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about me. My name is Sam Scarver. You drafted me third round. I'm a running back. I'm playing behind Calvin Hill, Dwayne Thomas. But don't tell me what to do. You and I can hook up horns any time that you want. I don't care how big you are, we can, we, can, we can get it on. So my theory was to meet it head on, and I even had a chance and had to a couple times to Tom Landry because he heard who I was, not only physically on the field, but verbally. And I thought a captain was supposed to step up to the plate and speak for the rookies. Nobody spoke for the rookies. So I did. So I got traded to the LA Rams. Well, that didn't stop me. I ran into two other general managers, Hank uh, <clears throat> Tank Younger and Johnny Sanders. Uh, ran into the same problem. So they're gonna make practice tough on me. I said, make it tough on me. I'm only gonna get better. I went to Canada, played there three years. I set a few records, played with some real good guys, and uh, so it's time to go back home to the NFL. Well, Pete Rosell said, well, looky here, Mr. Sam Scarpa, you have to sit down and write us a I'm sorry letter. I said, you kidding me? I said, no. I had to sit down and write a letter saying how sorry I was I left the NFL. I didn't know any better. I was too young. That I keep my things under wrap and I wouldn't come, out, come unglued like I did when I first got coming into the league as a rookie. But uh, I couldn't help myself. I can only be me until I got back. <laughs> I tried to just cut it loose again. I went to Detroit. I raised hell. I left there and went to San Diego. Got into it with the same two guys again. I didn't know they were there. Tank Younger and Johnny Sanders. And Tommy Prother was the head coach. So we went around and around and around and around. But I just played head and above for what I was doing. And someone said, hey, Sam, you ought to meet this lady, Mary Crosby. She was an agent in San Diego. Um, they do commercials and they do this. I said, okay, I'll meet her. But at the time I had a big afro, which I don't have now. I got a, had a big beard here and I did, had, don't have that now. And so I met her and we spoke to her. She says, hey, Sam, you seem like a pretty well-spoken guy, but you know, if you were to cut this off and cut this off, you can make a lot more money. I said, what? The next day I shaved, <laughs> I trimmed down, cut down my, you know, my, my little afro and started doing commercials in San Diego. And I was like the first guy who was allowed through the National Football League to do a commercial for San Diego. So I started doing commercials. 
Then I started studying with him more, and then I started doing a couple soap operas. And then one thing led to another, more public speaking. And it's been a pretty, I've been doing over 20 years now. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. But I've done a lot of, I did the first Viagra commercials. I'm sorry guys, I got no more free samples, okay? And uh, it's been a pretty good run. And from A-Man 227, I've done a lot of comedies. Uh, me and Jack A and Molly Gibbs and uh, Lena Reed, we're very, very close. And most times when I do a, a film, they end up working out with me.